Good morning. I'm Heather Wolf. The Congregation of Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Hamilton, Ohio, welcomes our Facebook and radio audience to our 10 o'clock worship service. Our services are also on the zionhamilton.org website. Our service today is led by Patty Eaton. Our music director is Bill Seal, and the lector is Tracy Deboy. If you are in need of prayer or want to have our weekly service bulletin emailed to you, please contact our church office at 513-863-5774 or email us at zionlutheranoffice at gmail.com. We now begin with our prelude. Can you hear me? Is this better? Yes. Okay. You know, this thing scares me because I broke the last one. <laughs> it gave up the ghost. Um, so good morning and happy Pentecost Sunday. Just a few announcements. I'm going to let you read the announcement flyer for the things that are happening later in June. But the beginning of June is quite busy. Um, but first, please note in your bulletin that the postlude, we are doing something very special today. Uh, There will be uh, singing, and we have Barb Johnson here as a guest organist. So the postlude is going to be quite spectacular. So you may just want to remain in your seats for that. And welcome, Barb. There she is. Okay. The church office is closed on Monday, so just bear that in mind. If you need anything, you can call me. Pastor John's not back until Tuesday, and Julia is off on Monday. So if you have any issues, just give me a call. Prayer with Patty is this Thursday, June 1st at 11 o'clock in the lounge. All are welcome. The Pride event and parade takes place on Saturday, June 3rd. The parade starts at Rotary Park at 1115. They then parade to Markham Park and from 12 to 6, there are booths and that's the actual fair. And then there will be music from 6 to 10. We have a wonderful thing. The Zion booth will actually be a pet station. This was the brilliant idea of Aaron Sanchez and Daphne Lee. (laughs) Daphne's idea. Daphne said you had the idea too. (laughs) But there were so many pets there and they were so warm and they were so thirsty that they decided to do a pet station where we'll have water and treats available under a tent so the animals can come in and get out of the hot sun for just a little bit. Then after the Pride Parade uh, on June 7th, there will be a service of blessing and healing for Pride Month. It will be at the Episcopal Church outside in the yard at 7 o'clock. That's Wednesday, June 7th. Now, June 6th, we have two things going on. We have uh, Young at Heart. We will be having lunch at the Casual Pint near Markham Park at 1145. And then that night at 6 o'clock, We'll be back at Markham Park for book club. And the book that they read is The Children's Blizzard. So now let us prepare for worship by listening to our prelude.
Thank you, Bill. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean. Quench our thirst and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash Wash away away our sins sins and and all that that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ Jesus, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Please join me in singing, O Holy Spirit, enter in.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. be with you and also with you let us pray O oh god on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your holy spirit direct us by the light of that spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through jesus christ your son and our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the first lesson is from the first chapter of Acts, Acts 2 through Acts, Acts, Acts number 2, verse 1 through 21. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th, 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. And now the reading. 
When the day of the Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven they came, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were, where, where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in each other in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of, each of us in our own native language? Peritans, Medes, Elimites, and residents of Mesopotamia, us in our, and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Paraguay and Familia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, creations and Arabs in our own language, languages were here from, for here them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judah and all, of, all who live in Jerusalem, let, us, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Know this is what was spoken to the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they, and they shall prophesy and I will show, I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly Psalm 104, verses 24 to 34 and 35b, which is found in your bulletin. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number. Living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro. And Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. The second lesson is from the from the 12th chapter of the 1st Corinthians. 1st Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. Paul is helping the Corinthians understand the relationship between our God-given unity and spirit-created diversity. The spirit creates the unity of faith and gives all Christians diverse gifts for the common benefit of all. We need one another's diverse spiritual gifts because the same spirit has given them to each person of the common good. 
and now the reading. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by, faith by the same Spirit, and to, to, another, to, to another, gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discern, discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. All of these are t- activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body through many are one body, so it, so it is with Christ. For one, in, for one in the one spirit, we all baptize into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we all made to drink of one spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said, when he had said this, he breathed on them. And said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I do not see any little children in the sanctuary. And I think our older youngsters would probably prefer to stay in their seats. So, what I will do, I will just tell you what I was going to share with them. As soon as I find it here. Okay. We have many symbols of the Holy Spirit. At Jesus' baptism, the symbol of the Holy Spirit was the dove. And if you look around, you probably will see the dove in many places within our church. At Jesus' baptism, there was also another symbol of the Holy Spirit, which was the water. And in our baptism, the words of God transform that water into the Holy Spirit. So water... And sometimes people say rain is from the Holy Spirit. They even sometimes think that clouds... Have you ever seen the clouds that have those... I call them God lines because it's light coming out from behind the cloud. And the cloud is like circled with light. We call that God clouds. Because they feel the rain comes from the cloud and it's the water. So that's the Holy Spirit as well. One symbol of the Holy Spirit that you might not be familiar with is the anointing oil. And that's part of our baptismal tradition as well, where the pastor will anoint the head with oil. And that is signifying the Holy Spirit. 
Now, the wind, that's a hard one to show. And I had a great little picture. You can come and see it later if you'd like. What they did was they, made, they have a cross, and then they have some... Um, it looks like a boat, because it looks like the sails of the boat. And they have the boat going on the water. Because wind is hard to depict. How do you see it? And that's sort of the point. We don't really see the Holy Spirit, do we? We see things that reflect the Holy Spirit. Along with the symbols of the Holy Spirit, we also have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which I bet you guys have heard in Sunday school. I know Miss Robin has taught her class about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And what the fruits are, if you are living a life directed and led by the Holy Spirit, there will be fruitful things in your life. And this is a wonderful picture. It's a cross, and then it has written all the fruits of the Spirit on it. And the one right at the top is love, kindness, peace, joy, patience. Ooh, that's one I really pray for every day. <laughs> patience. <laughs> then there's kindness, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. And if you are living a spirit-led life, these are the fruits that you will experience in your life. So I had coloring pages. I'll pass them on to the younger children when they are here. So, grace and peace to you from our Heavenly Father. Amen. This week I've been studying the Holy Spirit a lot. Those of you that received God pause in my email, almost every day there was something about the Holy Spirit. If you read portals of prayer, almost all of the devotions for this week have been about the Holy Spirit. And today's lessons, it doesn't happen all the time, but our lessons and our psalm and our gospel reading all had the same theme. That doesn't always happen. So I'm excited about that, and the theme, of course, is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to do the scripture readings that we have had today in chronological order. I have this thing. I need to know where I am, what is happening, what day is it. And sometimes when you jump around in the Bible, you don't know those things. So I've taken the strict scripture and put them chronologically so we can follow them, or I can follow them a little bit better. I hope you can as well. So our first reading was, um, chronologically, our first reading is Psalm 104. And verse 30 says, you send forth your spirit and they are created. That's the creation story. And uh, Reverend Lynn Crace, who wrote several of the God Paws that we uh, read this week, in her devotion, she said that this psalm was a poetic summary of the creativeness of the Holy Spirit. And she encouraged us to go out into our world and look at how lovely God created this earth and how special it is and how distinctive it is. So then chronologically, the next scripture would be our gospel reading of today. But we have to do a little bit of a flashback like Hollywood always does in the movies. And it usually leaves me confused because I'm like, where are we? <laughs> so we're flashing back just a little bit. Because our gospel today finds us um, in the locked room on Easter Sunday. And then we just need to backtrack a little bit more. Because um, backtrack a few days into John's gospel from chapter 14, verse 16. This was when the disciples and Jesus were in the upper room at the Last Supper. So God has not been crucified. Jesus has not been crucified yet. So this is where the conversation happened, that Jesus told his disciples that he was going to be sending them an advocate, that you will not be alone. I am sending you someone to help you, and you will not be orphaned. So that was giving them the hope and the, the faith that there would be someone helping them, there would be somebody guiding them, and 
Jesus wouldn't be here, but that advocate would. So that was Jesus' promise. So then we move forward to today. And in today's gospel, we um, have seen it's the risen Christ Jesus. And he's talking with his disciples. And he says to them, peace be with you. This was his benediction, his blessing that he gave them. And then he said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. This is the commission. This is their job. That's what they're going to have to do. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And that was the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I often wonder when Jesus breathed on them, did they feel any different? Did they immediately think any differently? Like, what's it feel like to be breathed on by Jesus and the Holy Spirit enters you? That must have been awesome. And just like God breathed into the nostrils of the first man to give him life, Jesus breathed on his disciples to give them the Holy Spirit to be the life of his mission, spreading the good news. I like what it says Do you guys read the last page of your bulletin? That was always my favorite thing to do as I waited for service to start. On the last page of the bulletin, it says, His own spirit of peace moves out of him as breath, as the wind of God that creates new things and creates in them a new calming faith. Then the mission of mercy begins. This spirit from Jesus is a pure gift that creates peace, and peace creates mission. Now, our first lesson reorients us to today. We're now at Pentecost Sunday. And this was a Sunday that was a feast for the Jewish people. It was 50 days after Easter. That's why it's Penta for 50. So we find the, Jew, the disciples in Jerusalem at the feast. And they're still awaiting the arrival of this promised advocate. So then there was a rush, like the rush of a violent wind. That was the sound they all heard. And it must have been really loud. Then divided tongues as of fire appeared above them, and a tongue rested on each of them. Surprise, here's your advocate. They still, I don't think, really knew. But then, I think if I were the, had been there, I would have been a bit taken aback. Because first of all, this big, loud, noisy wind, I'd be looking around for a tornado. Then these tongues of fire are appearing over people's heads. I would have probably thought, my goodness, it's the end of the world as we know it. Because nothing like this has ever happened before. So... Some of the people thought, um, I don't know what they thought with the wind and the tongues of fire, but people had certain thoughts when the apostles started to speak and they heard the apostles speaking in their own tongue. And there were many different people there from different areas who spoke different languages. And that was very amazing. Like, how is this happening? What is happening here? That he's speaking, but we're all hearing it in a different language. So they assumed that they were drunk. And they said, um, indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning, which I sort of chuckle at because I have seen people drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. So if I had been there and I think all of this going on and then they're talking and we all understand them in our language, I think I might have thought somebody was possessed, either them or me. So it's very unusual. But of course, this is a miraculous event from God. These people were filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was enthusiastic in his work and very creative in his work. So what's the job of the Holy Spirit? Well, we don't really have a job description in the Bible. You'd have to pull out many different passages to make a job description. But what Martin Luther did in both his small and his large catechisms, he's listed some of the attributes and the things that the Holy Spirit does. 
The Spirit binds himself to the word of God. It is the work of the Spirit to call us to faith in Christ by the gospel. He kindles hearts so that they grasp and accept the word of God. They cling to it and they persevere in it. So in order for us to really believe, we have to be open to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what enables us to believe. The Spirit enlightens dead hearts and blind eyes to recognize and receive the crucified, risen Savior. The Spirit sanctifies us by creating faith in us and leads us to be faithful, which begins at baptism, when the Word and the promise of God is connected with the water that, which is going to wash away our sins, and it's, it's combined with the anointing oil, and we are united to the death and resurrection of Jesus. So that's where our sanctification begins. And it's exciting because in a couple of weeks, we're having three baptisms. And then a few weeks after that, we're having one more. So that to me is phenomenal. In a church where we have had very few baptisms over the last few years, we're having multiple. And it just, praise God, that's wonderful. The Spirit also gathers us into one holy church, the communion of saints, and the body of Christ. So the Holy Spirit makes us one. So then now the second lesson from Corinthians talks about the gifts that the Spirit bestows on each of us. And here the Holy Spirit does a couple of things. It creates the unity of faith, but it gives out a diversity of gifts. That's almost like, it, it seems like it's opposition to each other. But what it does, it creates unity within our body of Christ, within our church. But each individual is given a gift so that that gift can be used to do the work of Christ and for the good and the harmony of all. So it's unity with diversity. And when you look, that's really what our world is, what we would like it to be, the Christian world. United, but diverse, and acceptance of all the diversity. So the disciples were called by Jesus. Through Jesus and the breath of the Spirit, God infused the power the disciples would need to engage in ministry. That was the Spirit's gift. God equips the call. He doesn't call the equipped. What a gift. So if he wants you to do something, if you don't feel you can do it, he will make it so, if that is what he wants. The Holy Spirit has equipped us here at Zion with the pastoral leadership of Pastor Mittemeyer, the wonderful heavenly music that Bill makes and has his choir produce. The Spirit has put together leaders in Zion who love Zion and are dedicated to the life and growth of Zion. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. New birth refers to spiritual birth. The Holy Spirit's act of bringing believers into God's family. I believe the Holy Spirit has given Zion new life and is bringing living hope to all of us. Let us pray. Adapted from the, the Come Holy Spirit is our congregational unity prayer. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful at Zion. Kindle in us the fire of your love, acceptance and understanding. Send forth your spirit. If it be your will, please purge our world of illness. Grant that by your Holy Spirit, our church leaders may be truly wise, follow your guidance, and ever enjoy your consolations. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing the hymn, Eternal Spirit of the Living Christ, number 402. The choir has sung this for you in the past. I think the bill will probably run through it one time so that you can get familiar with it.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Ever present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort and care, especially Patrice, Libby, Bob, Maggie, Steve, Donna, Doug and family, Pastor Mark, Joyce, Jim, Wayne, Nicara, Jace, Cash, Marty, Juan, Chloe, Missy, Melissa, Wanda, Rob, Glenn, Annie, Paul, Emma, Dennis, CJ, Tam, Juanita, Flo, Joni, Deidre, Patty, Terry, Mallory, Jerry, Mike, Jim, Noah, Janice, Shirley, Butch, Margaret Ann, Martha, Loretta Poe, who is a patient at Hamilton Hospice, and, and Captain Andrew Copas, who is deployed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our synod and community, especially Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Cincinnati and Lindenwald United Methodist Church in Hamilton. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Fruitful God, your spirit has opened our hearts to give back to you joyfully and abundantly what you have first given us. Continue to bless our efforts as the Campaign for Zion Ministries reaches new goals. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Woo. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share the peace with each other.
us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, seraphim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, breath of life and fire of love. With a mighty wind, you brought creation into being. And by a pillar of fire, you led your people into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your son, who poured out your spirit on his disciples of every race and nation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. And for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love that we with thankful hearts, we may be witnessed to your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out. For those communing at home, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. You may be seated.
please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Please join me in singing the closing hymn, Spirit of Gentleness.
Go in peace, serve the risen one. Reaching out with God's love. Please stand. God bless America. Praise God.